ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Secret Base Advanced Figure Preview video. Now before we begin, I have to say a massive thank you to Ryan Kirkwood for going out in person after work, snapping the awesome high-res pics, and this video that you're seeing at the start here. Show Ryan some love, because without him, this series literally wouldn't be possible. Now, for some reason, at the Summer Showcase, Hot Toys had Crosshair out on the table for Press to take photos of. But then, inexplicably, they took him away. Ryan did ask the staff if he was going to be back, and they said, maybe, maybe not. And it seems like they decided to put him out in the display case after the event is kind of already over. Nevertheless, we'll be taking a look at him. I'm pretty confident that with their track record of Echo and Hunter going up, that we will see Crosshair as well at some point. Now, they didn't show an unhelmeted head sculpt, which is the reason why I thought they took it away, because they were going to just perhaps fully reveal it with the unhelmeted sculpt, but no, they didn't do that. It's pretty much exactly as it was when they first teased it for a couple of minutes at the Summer Showcase event. Nevertheless, it looks fantastic. All of the great stuff about the realistic style weathering and the texture on the armor itself that we've already discussed with Hunter and Echo applies here with Crosshair as well. I'm pretty confident now that we've seen this many that we will get the rest of the team. Initially I thought, mm, maybe they'll just stop with Hunter, but now they've shown a third, I mean, they're almost there. Let's just bring this thing home, Hot Toys, make the entire team, and I'm pretty sure you'll be making a lot of people very, very happy. Now, if they do officially solicit this guy and show the unhelmeted head sculpt, of course we will do a proper 2.0 figure preview on him. You're not missing out whatsoever by watching this video. There will be a proper one done, do not stress. Now, in terms of the bits and pieces he was shown with, he does come with a fair few interchangeable accessories, mostly for his sniper rifle. Now, we do have some gorgeous high-res pics of the rifle coming up later in the video, but here you can see a couple of those attachments. It also looks like that standard set of either thermal detonators or droid popper grenades. Someone told me that I was wrong for calling them that, that they have a slightly different color scheme. Nevertheless, he does come with the full orb version and also the half version. If you'd like to see them in person, check out the Coruscant Guard review that recently went live on the channel and I explain a little bit further as to why there are two different versions. Now you are also seeing that chalky paint application, that sort of white dry brushing over the surface to give it the animated look. If you ask me, these are closer to their animated appearance, aside from of course the unhelmeted head sculpts, but the armor itself looks more akin to what we saw in the animation versus that more realistic style. If they were going to go that route, I think they would have ditched that chalky style texture, but I'm glad they didn't. I think it works really well here. Now, unfortunately, the array of hands that he comes with is kind of the basic clone hands at this point. Open palm hand, two regular sort of just relaxed hands, one pointing finger, then two weapon holding hands. No fists. I'm not exactly sure why they continue to not give clone trooper fists because... I mean, they could be fighting clankers. We've seen them take a few swipes at them here and there, and having them boxing a few droids would be really darn awesome on the shelf. Or, in fact, boxing each other, because Crosshair, of course, in the Bad Batch, does sort of follow his Imperial programming and become a little bit mean. So that would have been a nice touch, but I'm not complaining. I'm still very glad that they are working on a Crosshair prototype. Now that white chalky paint application process is on the armor as well, and it looks spectacular. They've nailed the design of number one, clone armor, 
Number two, the body that they use for these clones. With the 501st figure, they made that weird mistake with the ratchets at the hips, but then with Coruscant Guard, they decided to remove them, which I think is definitely for the better. But with this guy, it actually looks like they've gone for a slimmer body. And I think that's accurate to the show. I mean, take a look at his legs right there. They definitely look slimmer to me personally. And I'm glad they're doing that. That shows that they care about making the clones look different. That's one of the selling points about the Bad Batch is that they are defective clones in air quotes. So they are all different. Of course, we do have Rekka, who I'm hoping Hot Toys eventually decide to make. They'll probably leave him for last because he requires an all new massive body. But what I'm getting at is that I like that they're giving these various different body shapes and sizes. It means that, yeah, they really do care about getting these clones right. Now, the white chalky paint applications aren't the only bits of battle damage on the armor. You can see that there are some black scrapes and dirt and grime marks here and there as well. It's not just a simple over-the-top paint application. There's depth to it. There's a little bit of a metallic flake just ever so slightly in the light. And they've also made unique sculpts for these various armor pieces because Crosshair has a very unique design. That could be potentially why we didn't see him at the start, along with Echo and Hunter. I mean, they haven't really teased even any of the other Bad Batch members yet. So that could mean that they do require a lot more work. I mean, yeah, tech is going to require a ton more effort with that unique design to the helmet so the goggles go around and you can still see his face underneath. But I'm glad that they are taking the time to get these guys perfect. He does, of course, have a holster on the side for his DC-17 and a couple of discs. Do let me know if you know what those discs are that's on his belt there. I don't remember him using them in the show, but then again, I could, of course, just be misremembering there. Crosshair, to me, isn't my favorite character from the batch, but I am curious which of the Bad Batch members is your favorite. Mine is definitely Hunter. I just like how close the design is to a clone commando, but I know a lot of people really do like Crosshair. He has a very interesting arc in the show. I'm hoping he ends up back with the rest of the Bad Batch. They sort of defeat his Imperial programming or something, but we'll have to wait and see as the show does progress. There are also a lot of unique pieces here. He has this leathery style belt with a harness that goes over the top and a big honkin' backpack. Another thing which maybe they hadn't got quite right and they had to take him down, tweak the design ever so slightly before they put him back out on display here, but I personally am glad he is back because these pics really do show how badass this guy does look. Now you can see there he does have a couple of bits of red on the armor to break up the gray. That's the coolest thing about the Bad Batch to me is the color scheme. I love the gunmetal gray with that beautiful vibrant red there. It looks a little bit muted here on these figures, but I think that goes quite nicely along with the realistic look. So yeah, I'm totally on board with the color scheme. I think these will pop alongside the other Hot Toys clones. I am hoping that we do get more clones from Hot Toys and potentially even some named captains and commander figures to build out our clone army. They're off to a very good start with the 501st and also the Coruscant Guard, but I'd like to see some 212th, maybe an airborne trooper or two, and as I said, some unique clone commanders and captains. But not to go off on a tangent, we're here to talk about Crosshair. I've always wondered what this sort of fin dongle thing is on the side of his shoulder pad there. If you do know, let me know. I mean, I have the Black Series figure and I wanted that on him as well. What on earth is this fin? Maybe it's to help him aim or detect wind variations because he is a sharpshooter after all. 
but that's literally just me guessing. I don't know if that is the fact or if I've just made that up in my own head. Nevertheless, it's accurate to the show and I really like the way it looks. It adds a little bit of flair. He also has this big backpack on the back. I would imagine it attaches magnetically because you can remove it on various other versions of this guy from other companies. There are some nice red details on there and I'm pretty sure this is the exact same backpack that we're getting with Hunter. So hopefully that means when it comes to production, they're already making these for Hunter, it should speed up the process. At least, that's what I personally hope. Now, one interesting thing about this prototype that also hints at the fact that it might be very, very early on in production is that all of the decals look to actually be just printed pieces of paper that have been glued onto the armor. They're a little bit crude. This prototype does look very, very early on, so I think it'll be a while before we see this guy. I'd say that Hot Toys will show him, then potentially show Wrecker and Tech, and then maybe announce them one after the other for pre-order. I think that's the easiest and safest way to do it, because people on the fence about whether or not they should pick these up, because they don't know if Hot Toys will do the whole team, if they show that, yeah, here's the whole team, then people are much more likely to buy in here. Now, let's take a look at the sniper rifle. This thing is massive, as it should be. It's accurate to the show. I am curious to see how those various bits and pieces that swap out can actually interchange onto this rifle, because it does look like a fairly seamless piece. It is very, very large though, as I said. It's also painted beautifully, even though it's an early prototype, and I like that it's a slightly lighter color than the rest of the armor. Of course, Hot Toys doing clone weapons, it's nothing new. They've done Stormtrooper blasters for years. They know exactly how to paint these things. But I'd argue that this might just be one of the most subtle yet realistic weathered paint applications that I've seen on a blaster in a while. We'll have to wait and see if the final production version looks this good, but if it does, then yeah, I'm gonna be one happy Star Wars collector. He even has that smoked effect to the tip of the barrel, because this thing has seen some action. I do think one of the swap out pieces is for this sort of undergrip section of sorts. As I said earlier, if you know what they do, Please let me know, because I literally have no idea. I don't remember him swapping out parson pieces on the rifle, but again, I could just be misremembering. And here we have it, the helmet design. This is one incredibly unique helmet sculpt. It has these two mandibles that come around the front with this very swoop sort of snoot type area. I really like the way it looks. He also has these very sharp nostril looking things on the front. It's a very animalistic design. Then he's got the slightly larger eye section for where he would aim from with the crosshair logo and the viewfinder that can be pulled down. I also like that there is a ton of detail in the viewfinder itself. It's this sort of clear plastic piece because of course he would look through it to aim down his scope. This is a very, very interesting design for a helmet and I'm all for it. I love when they give us these unique designed parts and pieces. I mean, some of the other team members in the Bad Batch also have very, very unique helmet designs. Like I said earlier, Tech is going to be one that Hot Toys will have to nail, and I'm not sure if they're going to do a helmet that you can just take off, like Echo, or they're going to do a fully separate piece. But with this guy, I think it's definitely going to be a fully separate piece because the head is completely enclosed there. Overall, yeah, I love the way Crosshair looks. I'm pretty darn excited that Hot Toys is showing love for the animated series, the prequels, Clone Wars, and The Mandalorian, of course. Even though they are going a little bit slow when it comes to Clone Wars and the prequel stuff, I'm sure there will be more coming down the pipeline. Don't worry, they know that there is demand for stuff like Padme and the various other Jedi from the Council, so I wouldn't be surprised if at some point down the line we get them. Just take it one step at a time. Hot Toys will get to them. There is a whole roster of characters out there and they release 50 odd figures per year. So I'm pretty sure one of those figures will be something you're after, just have to bide your time until Hot Toys gets around to it. But with this guy, 
yeah, I'm super darn excited to build out the Bad Batch, even though so far I'm not a massive fan of the show. Now, if you are looking to pre-order this, and when he does go up for pre-order, I will put the link in the description below, but for now, he isn't. So who knows when it'll happen, but I personally cannot wait. If you are heading down to the description, check out the link to Six Scale Network, the awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.